Right, so didn't do any good um, cruising around my place. A bit late in the Arvo, sun's gone, whatnot. Anyway, um, been down the pub, done what we had to do, been in the bottle, got myself the essentials, only the best that we drink. Um, we're going to show you what's on the agenda for tonight. So, we're going to have dinner at Kyla's, um, and then, so here we are. That is, oh, we're here at Kyla's house, is up there. So, no one's behind us. Right, so we got this creek here. Um, and what happens is we'll walk up there tonight um, and you get heaps of water dragons. Alright, we gotta go because we got a car coming. But um, yeah, that's a nice little bit, nice little bit of insight for tonight. So you can sort of see what we're working with because it's not going to look the same going through at night. You're just going to see bits and pieces. But we're going to go up there after dinner. We're going to find some water dragons. One of one of Australia's most spectacular lizards. Another so easily overlooked reptile just because of how common they are you know she they sit around her pool everything so anyway yeah stay tuned for that because it's gonna be a good time So we've just been walking this creek. Um, we meant to come down here last night, but I don't know, I was tired and whatever, and I'd gone to sleep, so didn't do it. But we're walking down here today. The weather's taking a turn for the worse. It's cold and it's miserable. So we've seen pretty much nothing. But we just spotted this nice big boy sitting down here. And as you can see him there. So this guy here is a Gippsland water dragon. Now they're um, probably Australia's, one of Australia's, I think they are Australia's largest dragon lizard. And he is a pretty decent size male. They do get a bit bigger, but he's a pretty average size. He's, you can see he's big and bulky. He's got beautiful patterns underneath his throat. Check him out. Look at that there. When they're in, in um, breeding colours, so oh, a couple months ago at the start of the season, they're really blue, their whole body. And they get these beautiful flushes under there. You can still faintly see it, but he's starting to lose it. I was just saying to Kyla how we're sort of at the tail end of the season. So we're in autumn now, which I only just found out. But um, yeah, coming into winter, so it's cooling down. We don't have a great deal of warm weather left, which is rather unfortunate. I was expecting to come down here and still see a few out basking, even though it's cold. It's overcast, it was just raining like five minutes ago. But all through summer, these guys will be out in the rain and whatever, but um, yeah, it's just too cool now. You can see we've got a little bit of shed come off him. Um, and they're really, they're an extremely aquatic species of lizard. So if you come down here, um, I come down here on summer nights and they just sleep in the water. And this whole river system that we've just been walking up is just full of these guys, you'll see. 30 or 40 of them in a night just down here sleeping sitting in the water um, and during the day you'll find them you know perching on the side of the bank basking they'll be hunting insects hunting little lizards any plant matter things like that um, and then it, whenever they're spooked they just take refuge they dive straight in the water and they'll swim and they'll go up in there I didn't hear this guy jump in I don't think he had I'm pretty sure he'd been sitting in the water maybe from last night we had a hot day yesterday it was like 30 degrees um, it was 30 plus, it was like 35 actually. And 
So I was going to come up here, but I had a massive day at work and it sort of just didn't end up happening. But I thought maybe I could do it this morning. I was pretty gutted when I woke up and it was cold. But, um, yeah, so I'm fairly sure that he's just fallen asleep in there last night and he's still down there, which is kind of weird. You can see a tick has fallen off there on me. And that tick's not alive, I don't think. It's not looking very alive. I'm pretty sure that it would have drowned on him because he's been in the water for so long. These guys, when they sit in the water, their whole, um, basically their body like shuts down, so their heartbeat slows right up, and and um, they can just stay underwater for hours, which is pretty remarkable for a lizard like this. You can see, look how just how big he is. How you can imagine how quick they are. Look at those legs. How muscly. How much power they have to push them. So on land, um, these guys when they run, they actually stand up on back legs. You've probably seen it in some of my previous videos with the frill necks and things. The way they run, they stand up on the back legs, and these guys do the same. So that's, they call it like a bipedal, and they, you can see, you, you, it's not hard to see why. Look, they, their head, uh, their toes can come up to their eye. They've got massive legs, super flexible, and they have a big, long tail. Um, this guy's lost his tail there, and it's regenerated, which means it's regrown, saying that normally you'd only seen like skinks and things like that, but... Um, a few of our dragon species do do it. You can see he's got a laterally compressed tail. So it's pretty well the same principle as like a crocodile or something. So a lot of, um, most of our, I don't know, yeah, other dragon species that don't have an aquatic lifestyle will just have a round tail. Whereas this guy's is compressed. And what that acts, it's just like a big paddle. So when he's in the water, he can just swim and that tail will just propel him. So you see him going and they just, they swim exactly like a crocodile does underwater. Um, they just tuck in their legs, both legs, and they'll just they'll just propel themselves through the water. They got beautiful big crests, nice spines, big bulky head. You can see those jowls there. They're like a fat storage, and they're just big things of muscle. So when he bites you, he crunch down. He'd absolutely shred you. Like he would just crush your finger. And they have some pretty good teeth in there. You can see, um, and they're pretty. They just for chomping up anything. They eat a lot of. A lot of hard beetles and things like that but they're also predators they'll take anything so he'll be eating little lizards any frogs even you know small birds whatever he can really catch um even things like yabbies and stuff underwater they'll take so yeah they're they're quite cool they're a bit of a a uh, bit of a top predator along these along these um river systems there's not really anything that would naturally pose a threat to an adult one of these but now we've got introduced pests you know we've got foxes and things which um do these guys a fair bit of damage but other than that he doesn't really have too much to worry about maybe a diamond python or something but they're usually targeting a warm-blooded thing like a like a possum or something like that but yeah they're one of my favorite lizards they're so um so often overlooked here in australia and even by me you know growing up just always seeing these like kyla has them back we just walked up from her house is just down there and um, we just walked up here she has these basking around her pool. There's, there's like a number of resident ones that just live around her pool that I see every afternoon. Um, and obviously, yeah, growing up forever, seeing, you know, seeing them all the time, you sort of, um, unfortunately, without doing it on purpose, you lose the appreciation for them. But um, after, you know, spending years and years traveling Australia and seeing everything, and you, you know, you see everything that it has, has to offer, and you come back and you see the humble old water dragon they're pretty hard to beat and i've got a lot of i've got a lot of appreciation for them this i've i haven't seen anything that really that really makes me makes me say well like these guys you know look at that super super big you know look how bulky he is he's just a big big beast he's got all these nice spines on there it's unfortunate he's missing his tail it'll probably add you know a fair bit more on there but yeah look at him Water lizard. Sadly, we only seen one, but one's better than none. We'll walk him back. I was sort of on a on a home run home. I didn't think that we were gonna gonna see anything else. Was ready to ready to call it, but at least he's showed himself. I found this guy um, a few times, and he's easy to recognise because of his tail. So, although well, this is where I seen him last time, I seen him. He was a bit further down the river, um, and yeah, he's big resident animal he'd be the dominant male 
for this region, which means so they live in like a, a colony and they have like a sort of like a hierarchy system going on. So this guy, this guy's king, his boss, um, he's the big dominant boy. He'll like, during the day, he'll want to sit up nice and high, you know, up on a perch or something. And he'll sit there and he'll bob and he'll arm wave and he'll carry on and he'll be in full breeding colours. So it'll be real nice and blue. I'll attach a photo so you can see what they look like in breeding colours. Um, and he'll have all these females around here. He could have eight to ten females that be living around here, and then there's also be heaps of babies that hatch out from the from the nests, and they all sort of live amongst each other. And then as they grow, the babies will disperse. Um, you know, males will have to head up river to find other to find other females because you can't have two dominant males, and they punch on a lot over it. You can see he's got you know a few scars there. He's quite an old quite an old animal so he's got plenty of marks you see him biting each other and carrying on um but yeah they're definitely a cool lizard i wonder how he lost his tail probably in a fight similar to that it's pretty common to see the real big ones have a busted tail or something but yeah get a bit of show a bit of underwater footage of him swimming off In a nice little embankment, he'll sit in there till he feels like everything's passed, and then he'll pop his head out. And he'll, to be honest, he'll probably spend the rest of the day there. Um, being such a cold climate lizard, got a bit of water on the lens. Cold climate lizard, he doesn't need high temperatures to keep his um, body properly functioning. As you could see, he was quite, quite um, easy to propel himself through the water, even for quite a fair distance. Then, so. Yeah, definitely one of my favourites, and I'm so lucky to have him so close to home, or literally at home. So, glad to have shown one. I was getting a bit worried that I missed him before the season's over. The weather's not looking good, too good for the rest of the week, so hopefully before winter really comes in full swing, get a couple more warm days and I can show a few more of them off. So another local species, just had the water drag and now we got the water skink. That is... Oh. That's there you have it. We just had the water dragon and just put him down. Kyle actually spotted it while I was picking that guy up, but I didn't really take a great deal of notice. But look back, little water skink sitting under there. Now the local species, we have them all through my house. That was only a juvenile, they get about 30 centimetres long. But yeah, another beautiful little skink. Um, I'll get an adult, give you a better look at them, because yeah, another beautiful thing that we have around here. Calls our local area home.
All right, so we just spotted a um, Gippsland water dragon just sleeping in the water. Wouldn't really expect it, but it's about 16 degrees tonight, and this water's a couple degrees warmer than that, so just staying in here to get that little bit of extra warmth. I'll see if I can grab him for you. Oh, it's, oh, it's heaps deeper than I thought. Oh, do I put my head under? You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. Oh, I've got him. Didn't have to. Shit. Nice male. Have a look at that. That's a close to adult size. Got, got some nice colours going on. He's starting to get his orange and yellows under his throat. Nice greeny greeny blue sort of oh, main colour. Did it stop? Oh no, it's oh, no, alright. We're about to run out of memory so we're going to have to call it there but I'll get him straight back in. Spotted another close to adult size male Gippsland sleeping. They just sleep underwater. I don't know how long they can hold their breath for, but it must be hours and hours. This water is so cold. I'll do a bit of underwater. So we just let go of this big boy, that's where he's pulled up. He pulled up there and looked straight away, spotted a young female, probably one of his. He's got a living colony, so one male will have multiple girls. Straight away you can see the sexual dimorphism between the species. This is a female. She's not an adult but she can breed at this size and um, the one male, so old mate sitting over there, he'd have multiple females. Um, so they live in like a colony with like a, a hierarchy sort of thing going on where you know one dominant male will have a couple of uh, males there that aren't, aren't dominant and they'll eventually disperse off the group and then that, he'll have multiple females. And um, yeah, you can straight away just see the difference. They just don't have those same, those same colors that the, the boys have, but it's still beautiful lizard. And she's just sleeping, just asleep, middle of the night down there, almost in two foot of water. And I don't think this, is, it's, this stuff isn't well documented. No one, you know, everyone knows that these are a water dragon. They spend a lot of time in the water but it's not well documented the fact of how long they can actually stay underwater and how much these guys actually utilize the water, especially these Gippsland water dragons. They're a um, subspecies of the eastern water dragon and they basically occur from the Shoalhaven region in um, south coast of New South Wales all the way down to Gippsland, Victoria. And they just, they always just sleep in the water all through summer. Everything they do is in the water. You will not find them away from the water whereas the eastern water dragons can um, can live a lot further away and get by without the water but it's just crazy they just sleep underwater they don't even need to have their nostrils poking out and I reckon that they just exactly like a croc they just get in there and they just slow down their heartbeat it's nice and cool and they just don't need oxygen they can utilize what they've already got in their lungs and they can just sit underwater it's nice and safe you know there's no underwater predators that are going to cause any threat to these guys around here 
and as a result of that they absolutely flourish there's so many of them you know walking up here this this creek in the back of just out the back of Kyla's house you know we're only 50 meters from her house 70 meters however far we've walked and they're everywhere you know they're all through her yard they sit around her pool everything it's just crazy so lucky to have such beautiful species so close to home or literally at home and we'll get her back do another little underwater thing phenomenal lizards I thought I missed my chance to show you guys these lizards um, I come down here the other day and I only got one it was a cold day and yeah I guess they'd all just gone gone in their burrows which they're going to use through winter but um, a good good day yesterday and a good day tomorrow and they can obviously tell that the weather's going to be good tomorrow because these guys are out and they're just sleeping in this water here and um, yeah they're ready for yeah, yeah, nice warm day tomorrow. They'll just hunt, get as much food in them before winter. So they've got heaps of body condition, so they can just bunker down for the next six months, basically, and not have to eat, not have to drink, and they will just they'll just live off nothing, and they'll still come out of that perfectly healthy. All right, so the um, GoPro footage just cut out. I'm on the last legs of this memory card, so I'm basically deleting as we go. Didn't really, you know, come down here and plan, but. Just have a look at that. This is the pinnacle, as good as they get. Check out those colors under there on his throat. And he's just this beautiful turquoise blue. Yeah, got a little little drop on there. I don't know if that's better or worse, but this is as good as they get. This guy's just in prime of his life. He's at that stage where he's, he's fully grown. You know, he's He's an adult male, he's dominant. He's got all of his females around here. He's just just got the best colors, you know. They don't they don't get much better than this and um, I've seen a lot of these the, the Gippsland form over the years in, in multiple different localities and I've I've never seen such such good animals and such numbers of these just like that's just insane. It leaves you just leaves you for words. Just that blue turquoise colour. Look at the size of the head on him. Massive big jowls there. Nice crest there. They're an apex predator along these creek lines. You know, they'll eat anything. This guy's big. He's got super powerful jaws. He's got teeth for basically chewing up anything from plant matter to small animals. You know, whether that be, um, yeah, like, I don't know, birds, mammals, lizards. Um, frogs, whatever, but mainly yeah, insects and things, but also like crayfish, um, fish, whatever they can get their mouth on, and they'll just smash it down. But, you know, so many years that I've spent traveling the country, seeing everything that Australia's got to offer, all the amazing reptiles that we have, and we come here and I come home and I just see this and it just blows you away. You know, we don't have anything else like this. Anywhere in the world, we don't have there's no dragons that get to this size, that have these colours, that live in this lifestyle, you know. This thing is super aquatic. It spends so, so much time in the water. They really are just a true dragon. Look at that. It's just a big, bulky lizard, you know. If this thing bit you, he'd go straight down to the bone. They're super strong jaws. It's just, yeah, they're so stoked. I thought I missed these guys for the season, so... Um, I'm just yeah so happy that we come in we found them and we found some good ones you know beautiful specimens to display you can see just the true gems that we have down here on the south coast in our backyards we're just so lucky just what a phenomenal is in right we just spotted two one just jumped in and one was sitting on the bank but we'll go over and see whether we can find them there's a deep embankment bit of a root system. Oh, there's one sleeping over there. That one's actually out of the water, so it might go. So this is what I was saying about the colonies. Just chuck that here, Troy. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier about the colonies. So there was one just right there. One jumped in off those roots over there. Got another one sleeping on the bank. I don't know if we can see it. 
I'm gonna go in. Oh, we got one over there too. So it's crazy just how many of these there are in such a short distance of time. Yeah, maybe try and I'm sinking. Actually, it's past the deer. I won't even, I'll just film it. Right there she goes. There's a big, deep root system under there. And that just provides heaps of cover for them. So it's a good area just for a colony. You know, they can lay their eggs up on the bank up there. And they have lots of cover, you know, they got their water, heaps of food and stuff. Spotted another water jargon. Oh, she's on the move. Uh, straight in on embankment. We'll just leave her there. 